Ready? I'm going to clap it. And one of the fun things is sometimes to start before Julie claps. So you could have started the episode by now. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm just going to clap. She's everybody. going to clap anyway. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, hi, everybody. Welcome back to our YouTube channel. And we have some really exciting updates. In particular, we first want to say thank you for watching our channel and be sure to like, subscribe, and turn notifications on. I Hang on. It's a really important fact that only half the people watching this channel at the moment are subscribed. It's and true. And it takes a, a second, click, a half a second. Two seconds. Well, you let us know two how long it take you. <laughs> possibly a long time. But, Comment yeah, down below. Just please, please do subscribe. It really helps the channel. So we've just had some um, brainstorming ideas and we've decided on a new format for our channel. And we're kind of really excited about it, aren't I we? I don't think it's a brainstorming idea. I think it's a barnstorming idea. So I don't um, know what that means, but that might be an American English thing. <laughs> you say brainstorming, brainstorming, we say barnstorming. Do you not know what barnstorming? No. Oh. What? You should try storming some barns and you'd find out. Anyway, it's, it's an expression of excitement because I'm very because, excited. Um, because one of the things that we realized on this channel is that we've got so much varied content here mm -hmm. at Mapperton that sometimes it can be hard to bring it all together. So what we are going to be doing from now on, starting mm -hmm. with today right now, is having Julie and I introduce each episode. Yeah. And so it's a full episode, so stay tuned because there's lots going on lots this up. week. And, um, <laughs> And in addition to that, um, just give you some news. I do what, what, also, what is happening Well, I do also want to mention, for those of you who are just tuning in for the first time, Mapperton is considered the nation's finest manor house. But this isn't a necessarily um, just about the house. Well, in fact, it's not. It's um, a big estate that has renovation projects throughout, farm buildings, cottages. We're rewilding. Uh, we've got uh, beavers that have just been reintroduced, White Park cattle. We have weddings here. We're open to, we open up the house to the public. Public comes in, you know, 20,000 visitors a year, would you say? Nearly. About that, nearly? Nearly, we're getting there. Our gardens, we have a cafe. So it's a whole, think of Mapperton as like a whole business. And that's what I'm, we're going back to what Luke just said. There's so much going on you, through the You use the, the word business and it, and it is obviously at one level of business. But more than that, it's a community. Yes. Um, it's a community that we have a responsibility to support, to help thrive. And one of the ways that we're doing that is through YouTube. So all of you watching are immensely helpful in supporting what we call this really important part of England's heritage. Let me just scroll back quickly. So Matt Burton has been in the family for about 75 years, but the original family ancestral seat was sold. So if you watch my YouTube channel called American Viscountess, you can see that uh, four part series where I take my father-in-law back to the house that he grew up in, Hinchingbrook, which was sold in 1955. And among, when it was sold, a lot of its contents were sold. And we're still trying to get back some of those contents. And guess what? One of those treasures has arrived today. We saw it on an online auction house. And I said to Luke, I think we should, I, I don't even know what this is, but I think that we should put in a bid. And we were successful. <laughs> think gold. But, 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 I gold. Think, but I think anything that, we, anything that we're able to restore from Hinchingbrook that has a link with the family is obviously important to us. So whatever the value, um, getting it back is really exciting. So we're going to be opening up that box yep. and I'm going to be seeing it for the first time. So am which, I. Which is, which is terrific. And then I think you've got a new project. Is it a new renovation project? Yeah. So we haven't done really on this channel so much renovation in the house. Um, but if you've watched our restoration story, there is a video on our channel that discusses really the past five years of Luke and I, not just uh, in one sense, um, renovating parts of the house and adding new ensuite bathrooms, but the further estate as well. However, there is now a project in the house it's right over there behind that paneled door and it's called the Munimit Room. Now, listen, when I first moved, uh, married into this family and you would talk about going to the Munimit Room and bring out that archive and I'm like, what is a Munimit Room? Well, that's the room we're going to be basically renovating. But can you explain to everybody what a Munimit Room is? Because I certainly didn't know as an American. Judy's got really excited about the Munimit Room. 
my feeling was that this was a small room tucked away. It didn't matter if the paint was peeling off the walls and, you know, if That's it had a slightly kind of damp smell. I mean, that was all part of the kind of texture of the place. But I suppose it does matter at some level because the monument room is where we store our family archives. Mm -hmm. So it's full of back. files that contain letters, letters from various ancestors, some of which are personal letters, some of which are, are more public related to their political life. Um, but most interesting to me are some of the more recent collections. So we've got fabulous photo albums, Victorian Edwardian photo albums, um, letters from, um, from forebears to each other, some of which are really poignant and yes. some of which you're, you're looking at. So anyway, in answer to the question, monument um, really means archive in this context. It's over there. Now it is a small renovation, but I'm also getting my master's right now in country house studies and I'm doing it on Alberta, your great grandmother, an American like me, the ninth Countess of Sandwich, and I'd like a nice place to work in there to do I, my I archiving. Think, I don't think this is really a monument room restoration. <laughs> I think this is a Julie study creation tradition. That is what's coming up on this episode. I've got to go, ready? We got to get the show on the road because I've got to open up that treasure She's that's arrived from Scotland. She's always in a rush. So let's go, let's go right. open it up. I'm going to go get it and I'll meet you back. Yeah? Right here. Well, somewhere. back somewhere in okay. the house. This is the box, everybody. This is the box of treasure. I'm so excited. So again, if you haven't watched American Viscountess, which is sort of my other channel, I, I film at historic houses. And what we did this year is we went to, well, the Montague, uh, well, the old Montague family seat called Hinchingbrook. That's why our last name, well, our title name is Viscount and Viscountess Hinchingbrook, but it's a whole other blog, and that's somewhere on the channel too. Anyway, <laughs> so Hinchingbrook had been in the family since Hinchingbrook House, it's like a castle, had been in the family since 1627, and then it was unfortunately sold in 1955 by Luke's grandfather, and that was the year, 1955 was the year that more houses in this country were uh, demolished than ever, ever before. Luckily, Hinchingbrook House was not demolished. It was sold to the local council and it became a school and it still is a school today. It's Hinchingbrook School. Now, the reason, if you're asking, well, why did they sell all these houses or why did they demolish them? It's because after two world wars, taxes that were levied on these properties were just so enormous that the owners couldn't keep them uh, running anymore. So anyway, I got to get going here because I've got to give this to Luke, but the treasure is in here. So anytime we sort of hear about a treasure that's come from Hinchingbrook or we have like alerts on and some people alert us anything about Sandwich, Earl of Sandwich, Hinchingbrook, and this was then alerted. We looked at it and we thought, well, let's put in the lowest bid, which was 20 pounds. And we, we were successful for 20 pounds. This came, and it says there's something on here that shows that it is from Hinchingbrook, so it's really exciting. So I'm gonna go find Luke right now. Um, but yeah, I feel quite good because as I look around the staircase hall, like there's Alberta. She is who I'm doing my master's on, and that's why I want to get the monument room done. That's the ninth Countess of Sandwich. She was the last, uh, well, the last Countess of Sandwich to live at Hinchingbrook. So. Um, I, feel, I, I feel that she probably would have had this hung somewhere. So I feel a connection between Alberta and I, and then all of a sudden I'm bringing back a treasure from Hinchingbrook that no doubt she would have had um, as, as well uh, surrounding her. So as I was saying, first little sandwich, I mean, who knows? What I'm holding here might have been at Hinchingbrook when he was at Hinchingbrook. Same goes for Alberta there. The same also goes for the fourth Earl of Sandwich, who might have been living at Hinchingbrook, and this, this could have been in his bedroom. That's how important for me, at least, it is. But all these paintings that you see here were once hung at Hinchingbrook. So I feel that this is really important that we were able to find this. And, um, but the question will be, what period does it date back to? So I don't know what period it dates back to but I think probably prior to Alberta. So for me, it's all about Alberta. Oh Here it goodness. is. 
What is in the box? Here it is. This is it, everybody. This is it, everybody. Do we, know, do we know what it means? Well, we did. We, we do know because we bid on it. Okay, hold on. There's paper around it. Paper. Hold on. Let's get the, it's wrapped very well. Here is the... So what we have is a gilt wood wall mask with sticker purportedly from Hinchingbrook together with a porcelain... Go for it. <laughs> Giardinere. Decorated. That sounded Italian, didn't yeah. it? Yeah. Jardinière. I, it's French. I know because my yeah. Italian lessons. Decorated with a gesture and other figures. Okay. All right. Julie is obsessed has, with this stuff. She's obsessed with stuff, but she's got a little um, thing going on the internet whereby any time the word Hinchingbrook comes up, she gets mm -hmm. a notification. Mm -hmm. I do. So if you've got anything you want to sell, just <laughs> get a little sticker, write Hinchingbrook on it. Very funny. Stick it on and put it on the internet no. and she's bound Wrong. to buy it. Wrong. That's okay. Just, here it is. Okay, it's this is one. This is one. You hold that, and then we'll show everybody. There's okay. that. Hold on. That's the Giltwood frame right. or the Giltwood mask. And then here's the. Try it again. The. Go on. Go on. Jardiniere. No, no. Jardiniere. Jardiniere. Because yeah. I'm doing Italian. Okay. Okay. Let yeah. me just put this down over right. here. This is this is a very toothy chap. Okay. It does. I see it. I see oh, it. Right. I see it. I see it. I see it. See, it says from Hinchingbrook. Now, he usually is the expert with this stuff. We are, I am going to talk to Paula. Wait, 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 wait. I can okay. see from Hinchingbrook, and I've got to be honest, that the writing does look as though it might date back 100 years. The it's got a little sticker myself. on it with a kind of frilly edge. Mm -hmm. It's also got woodworm. Mm -hmm. So it's been around a while. So, and the woodworm is very dead woodworm, and it feels like it could be a piece of oak or something. So I'd say there is a, there is a chance that this is from Hinchingbrook, but I think you need to talk to Paula and yeah. see if she so can- So Paula, just so mind. everybody's aware, is, ex is obviously the house and the gardens are open to the public. We mentioned earlier, we get about 20,000 visitors a year. Oh, yeah, Paula is so, Paula's our visitor manager. Yeah. So she's, she looks after all the visitors who come, come here, but she also knows a huge amount about the Montague collection. Uh, Archives, and she's a historian. Yep. And she's going to be able to look at this, I think, and give her expert opinion <gasps> as to whether you've been had. Or whether no, I haven't. I haven't. 20 pounds. No, no, let's look at the, the vase, the, the jardiniere, because this has got some really interesting figures on it. We've got a, a minstrel. Mm -hmm. We've got a chap with bagpipes. We've got a scarecrow, we've got a jester, we've got a sort of village fool, and it looks like, like the Nels Pied Piper. Like Nelson. No, like not, Nelson. Not, not, the not, not the Pied Piper. Um, there's a dog bringing something, a bird to a hunter. So again, these are all classic figures, representations that might well have come from that period or before. And on the bottom it says 20 out of... 10, well, out, 10 of out of 30. So it was a, it was a run of 30 of these. But can I just say on. one thing? Yes. 20 quid was a good price to pay. <laughs> Except it wasn't 20 quid. It, it was. Because when you quid. look at the detail, it of was the 20 invoice, quid, everybody. You realize that it was 20, 20 pounds quid. Plus the VAT. Okay. Plus the hammer price for the auctioneer. Okay. Plus the delivery. Okay. And you get to 62 pounds okay. 96. <laughs> it's still worth it, everybody. It's not it's quite still, the bargain that you claimed it was. Well, okay. But I still think for sixty-two pounds ninety-six, she hasn't it's done good. badly. All right, listen. But, I'm going to take these. In particular, I'm just going to take this one because I don't know how much Paula can tell me about that. But I think this one. If I just have a chat with Paula, she might and see, she might tell you some more, and she can give her opinion. Shed some light as to whether it really comes from Hinchingbrook. That's the big question. I believe it does. I'm a believer. You're a believer. I'm a believer. She's I'm a believer. believer. I'm a believer. All right, everybody, welcome to the Mapperton Estate office. Um, here we are. So you can see we've got all of our Halloween stuff getting ready to go that will come up in a future episode about our big Halloween trail, but Holly has been hard at work making these, which is amazing. But let me introduce you everybody, as I was just talking about, Paula, who knows probably the Montague history <laughs> better than I do. <laughs> or anybody in our family. That's um, 
No, it's so true. So Paula, we, I have just opened this mm -hmm. and uh, Luke and I found this anytime something from like Hinchingbrook or Sandwich comes up, I have like alerts on, I look at it. This came up, it says it was a Giltwood mask purportedly from Hinchingbrook with mm -hmm. a sticker on the back. So I put in a bid for 20 pounds in Scotland and I, <laughs> I was successful. Wow. But the question is, what do you think? Wow, that's very pretty. I know it's not everyone's taste, but I really like it. Um, lovely gilt wood, probably would have been a pear, I would imagine. Right. Um, very possibly from Hinchinbrook, would have been hung on a wall, maybe to support a shelf or a ledge or something, so hence the pear maybe. Ah. Um, so a very decorative piece, sort of Victorian Gothic, the Gothic Revival. You right. Know? So that's sort of mid 1800s. Okay. Towards the latter half of the 1800s rather than earlier. Very probably from Hinchinbrook, you know. I could see it being there. Yeah. Maybe in the and library or something. There we go. I mean, I might have to look. We don't really have good photos mm. from back then, but I might look through the 8th Earl of Sandwich's photo albums yeah. to see if I can see, I don't know, something hanging in the Definitely. library. Yeah. So I see. So you think a ledge possibly would have been on top of this. I think so. And a pair. Yeah, possibly a pair, either supporting a ledge or some kind of small sort of shelf or something, you know, right. kind of larva type thing. Something yes. Something on top of that. So probably a pair. Yeah. And so was this, just this look, was this popular then in this sort of... Hugely popular. Really? There was a big sort of green man, pan, mask of pan, face of pan, that kind of revival, sort of very... Victorian Gothic revival, I think sort of Dracula, you know, right, right, that kind of thing. Um, so, yeah, hugely popular, oh a very much goodness. on vogue, a real sort of you know piece to hang and have your guests to admire. I do need to keep one. my everybody keep your eye open for the other pair mm. to this. So, um, but what do you think of me buying this for twenty pounds? Absolute bargain. <laughs> <laughs> Absolute bargain. I'm gonna get you to do all my shopping for me, Julie. <laughs> I'm so happy. Yeah. That is brilliant. Okay. Lovely so, piece. Now, where do you think? So Paula's in, Paula d d does a lot of the tours here, but she's in charge of the tours and the whole visitor experience when you come to Matt Britton. And many of you who have come here probably had a tour with Paula, but um, you really know where, where would you hang this in the house? Um, Anywhere. Really, I would be putting that in either the library or the drawing room. It might look a little bit out of place now, though. Right. On its own. Yeah, on its own. I know, because it, it would have been a pair. Yeah. So we really need to try to find the pair. We need to try and find the, the pair. Yeah. So Maybe even in the staircase hall somewhere. Oh, that's a great idea. Yeah, I think that could go there. Yeah. Okay, well, we will let you know where we decide, because we will be <laughs> hanging this somewhere. And then if you come on a tour of Mapperton, we will make sure that it's somewhere in one of the rooms that's open to the public yeah. that you can then be like, oh my gosh, I saw this on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> um, thank you, Paula. I'm so, so pleased. And again, anybody out there, if you uh, recognize this or know where the other pair is, I know that's a really hard mm -hmm. ask, but anything that you find from Hinchingbrook, do let us know. We have had several people on YouTube uh, remember the Hinchingbrook House yeah. contents a book that was signed Alberta Sturgis. Somebody notified me of that yeah. and I got that one for five quid. So bargain. yeah, bargain. All right. Thanks everybody. I'm off to um, go to the Muniment room now okay. because that's where you need to see if you can find a mention of it. That's right. Yeah. And also we're going to do some renovations there. Fantastic. We're going to make it a nice place to work. Good. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, Julie. Okay, thanks, Paula. A huge thank you to our sponsor, Le Chimeau. I am wearing my Chelsea boot, which I wear pretty much all the time here at Mapperton, apart from when it rains or I'm going through like boggy bits on the estate. And you can see here, we have a lot of Le Chimeau boots. And this is for us as well, but also the community here at Mapperton. And when you come and stay for a yoga retreat here at Mapperton, we want to make sure that there are a lot of boots for our guests as well. So Lushimo has just sent another package, which you have all sorts of sizes here. And this is uh, making sure that whatever size foot you are, if you come and stay here at a yoga retreat or you work here and you want to borrow a pair or you just forgot a pair and, and it's pouring with rain and you've come to tour the gardens and you might need to borrow a pair, 
we have plenty of pairs. So this is sort of our stash for our family, for guests, and um, they're incredible. So Le Chimo are our boot of choice and not just the Welly, but obviously the Chelsea boot as well. So luckily for me, there's three pegs left, um, as in, well, six pegs, but uh, for a pair. And I'm gonna start putting them into the right spot. Thank you, Le Chimo. We do love these wellies. So you probably don't recognize this room. This is, we maybe in one of the past episodes, you've seen this room, I'm not sure. This is the muniment room. You can see it's a bit of a mess. Good news is, is as you know, because you've been watching this video, we have Malcolm here today because we are doing the Keeper's Cottage, the fairy tale cottage. So Malcolm, what do you think? Malcolm's gonna help us. We're gonna create something here, a little bit that we can, I can work in here, and my father-in-law can work in here. Is that right? Indeed. You need some so, help. <laughs> <laughs> that's why we have you. So um, obviously, oh, we've got. There's some... a tour going on. Is that a tour? No, no. I think somebody's in the church. The church is right next door. No, no. Sorry. Okay. Okay. So, so we've got to look at this and assess what the the damp issues are, because there's obviously been some damp issues here. Mm -hmm. Whether or not they're historic or current, we will have to investigate. Um, because of, historical or current, we don't know if it's from like now or from what, like oh, the 18th century when this was well, built. Well, it wouldn't be that far back. It would be 20th century <laughs> damp, I should think. Right, but exactly. From when exactly, we'll have to establish. Well, we'll just have to establish whether it's live. Okay. So. Um, All right, so what are you thinking? Because I can take the camera off and kind of walk around a little bit. But what do you, well, right here. Right, we've okay. got Yeah. So. At the moment, the other thing is, is the bookcases are fairly, um, well, they're not matched. So I right. think there'll be a bit of juggling around. So the bookcase okay. that we have over here is a matches this one. What would you describe that color? Um, frightening. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> it is. Oh, yeah. I found my lip balm. That's super. So, well, so, but what I would suggest then is yeah. that we probably paint, uh, well, obviously the whole room needs redecorating. Yeah. But what we might do is to paint the bookcases in with the wall. Okay. So they sort of disappear a bit. Yeah. Um, and we might even do what we did in the family sitting room here and paint the insides of the bookcases a different color. Yes. Just to make, give a little more interest. That's, so, I like that. So that's an idea. Okay. Um, obviously the floor needs a bit of love and attention. Yeah, um, I'm just gonna turn the camera around so you guys can see this way and this bookcase that we're talking about. One bookcase, Malcolm, that we're possibly thinking of moving completely out of here or keeping. Yeah, it depends whether or not it fits. We'll have to measure up. We'll measure the whole room up at yeah. some point, Julie. So. Um, this door, everybody, here, leads into the dining room. So this door here leads into the dining room. This, of course, leads out into really what I would say is an American, the front yard. <laughs> yeah. New curtains. Yeah, new <laughs> curtains. Absolutely. We need new curtains because they go to the ceiling all the way up there. But then if you take them down, they don't touch the floor. Let's have a little look at that. Flying half mast. Yeah. Um, and then you can see everybody, this bookcase here that we were talking about. So it's the same as the one that's now behind us, but it is this, this, mm, it almost looks better on camera. It is just an odd green color. Then everybody here in the meeting room, we've got steps that leads to the adjoining church. So, Right there is the church. That's where we go in as a family. Again, this is the space that we're talking about. We would, so that, what would we do here? I, so I think what you'd do here is rather than having a console table, mm. we would do a really lovely flat, um, de, you know, a table that's, that, that we I can use work on. Desk. Right. And then above here, I think this would be a great wall for some artwork. Yeah. But it would be nice because then we could get table lamps on here and get some low light into this space, which I think would help it. And we did mention that up uh, yes, there. Yes, and I think you need to improve on that. So we'll probably do some form of 
pendant fitting that has sort of, yeah. um, you know, it'd be nice to find an antique brass one or something like that. I agree. Um, the I other agree. thing I wanted to ask you is, is this a working fireplace or is well, it Well, oh yeah, not? so is there a fireplace on that side? No, there's a radiator there's on a this radiator, side there, everybody. which is fine. So but I just this... wondered whether or not that is a working fireplace and we could use a fire in it. Um, it doesn't look like it's been swept. I mean, I'm sure it could work. Mm -hmm. It'd be nice if we get this to work. Lovely. Don't you think so? It'd be a nice so? room to work in. be a nice room to work in. Yeah. But we are doing this, this project. So we've told Malcolm today that we need his help with the Munimit room. Get my skates on. That's right. As we said before, managing Matt Burton is no picnic, even for the family that invented the sandwich. And again, something like this, being able to find a treasure like this means so much to us. And we've been able to build this wonderful community of patrons who really help to support this part of England's heritage through our restoration projects, through renovations, and also through finding treasures like this that were once lost um, by the family, uh, you know, over a hundred years ago. So I just want to say thank you to all of our patrons for creating such a wonderful community. And if you're interested in becoming a Mapperton Live patron, do check it out, patreon.com forward slash Mapperton Live. And here you'll get lots of behind the scenes videos, live Q&As with me and Luke. You also get Matt Britton branded goodies and uh, cards from Luke and I as well. And really also just a whole host of other benefits, but in particular being a part of the Matt Britton community is really special. We have lots of new friends from the community and we hope that you become a part of our community as well. Again, patreon.com forward slash Matt Britton Live. Bye. <laughs>